Park is an old estate that used to be along the River Wandle, and the River Wandle is the river that runs through the park and is the reason that the park is here. The family who last owned the park, who gave it to the National Trust, were called the Hatfield family, and they ran a snuff milling business that they imported from America and then ground it in the park, and then it went to London in the very popular Victorian ages. And Mr Hatfield, when he died, left the park to the National Trust because he wanted us to look after it for the local people and for wildlife. And he also wanted it to be free for the local people. So we, we generate all our income from other activities, but not from admission. The National Trust then didn't really know what to do with the park. So it, it was a green space and a park people could use, but nothing really happened here. But over the last 20 years, there's been a real push to try and make more of the park. And in 2007, we started a master plan for the park. enjoy using the park as a green space. It, it is a really urban area so people really appreciate being able to come and relax and enjoy the green space. And in the past when we've done visitor surveys people have said they would like there to be a place where they can go to the toilet, they would like there to be more to do, more things for them to do as a family and for there to be more events and activities. So when we were putting together our plan for the park we wanted to create a space that would be the heart of the park, that would be the place where pe people could come to and find out a little bit more about us as an organisation but also have time to, to relax and, and enjoy the environment in the park and learn a bit more about its history. And then as the project developed, we also brought in the sustainable renovation element, which we also have tried to make the building so that it's a lovely place to come and be. And if you're interested in how you could renovate your house, you can really find that out in an accessible way. When we were looking at how to renovate the building, we wanted to use products that could be used at your in your home. So we wanted things to be transferable. So when we were looking at different products, we looked for things like triple glazing, the, these doors, okay, they're bigger than you would have at home, but they are something that you could use at home. We also wanted to trial as many different products as we could in the building. So there's three different ways that you can double glaze or triple glaze your house in the building so that you can see different options and we can tell you how that worked, how that didn't work. So we've got three different types of solar panels on the roof so there's three different options for how you can generate electricity and hot water. We've got six different types of insulation in the building and the, apart from the insulation that we've used to insulate the floor which is Celatext, they're all breathable, um, recyclable and sustainable products. We have an air source heat pump which helps heat the building and we also have a log burning stove with a back boiler. So there are two sources of heat. So the log burning stove uses logs from the park which are a free source of heat and then it, and it heats the underfloor heating. The whole building is heated by underfloor heating. And the other op at the back of the building there's an air source heat pump which then takes two degrees from the air temperature and uses that two degrees to compresses it which creates energy and then it's and then it heats the water. It was very hard to find a contractor that knew about conserving historic buildings and also knew about green technologies but we worked with a contractor who has is one of the oldest running building firms in the UK. I think they've been running for 400 years and they were really keen to learn about the products and say so things like the insulation, it's really important that you don't get lots of air gaps in the insulation and they put their carpenters on the job of fitting the insulation to the walls and we've had heat surveys done of the building and there's hardly any areas where there's cold bridges so they've done a really excellent job. Quite a few of the products that we used in the building did have a long leak time. So these windows, because quite a lot of sustainable products aren't made in the UK, so we had to get them in for abroad. So these doors came from Portugal because there's no glass companies that make triple glazed glass in the UK. So hopefully the more demand there are for products, there will be suppliers who start making them in the UK. 
It's also important to find a contractor who has either used the product before or is willing to learn how to use it and is not just going to think they know how. So lots of the suppliers, like the cork insulation supplier, he came around a training session for the builders so that they know how to use it. Our part of the Living Green project in in, in London was to renovate this building so that it appealed to people who were interested in heritage and it also appealed to people who were interested in green technologies so that you would have two, two key audiences who would want to come to your building and, and find out more about it. So our aim was to renovate this building to be an interactive exhibition so that you could come along and find out about how you can make your house or build this more sustainable from your behaviour to building techniques and also to help people know which products work well, which products don't work so well, which will be more useful and which will also give them the, the best value for, for money in terms of investing in that product. It's difficult to say how many people come because of because they want to renovate their house. We know some people have gone away and put solar panels on their roof and we give people our energy monitors so that they can monitor how much energy they're using at any time and people are really keen to have those and to, so that they can go and help start measuring how much energy they're using. When we were doing the renovation we did taster days where people could come and speak to the builders and speak to the installers and find out about how they could put these products and these methods into their buildings at home and we had about 100 people who came along to those sessions and many of them now volunteer in the park and help to help other people find out more about what they could do with their homes. So there definitely is an interest in the techniques that can be used. The local area is known for its a piece of legislation called the Merton Rule. So the local council, the local government, brought in a rule that said that all new buildings have to have 10% of their energy generation from renewable resources. So that makes us a really good resource for the local people. If they are building a new build in, in the house or in a business, they can come to us and see what products have worked best, what haven't worked so well. And that was seen as by local businesses as a real, a real benefit to, to be able to come somewhere and not have the supplier saying, oh, this is the best option. Because we can honestly say, because we have no tie to the supplier, which, which product we thought has worked best for our use and housing the building. And since the building's been opened last November, we've had... 30,000 people come to the building to find out and, and enjoy the exhibition and the, the space here. We have 6,000 school children who come each year. So now this visitor exhibition is open, they can come and learn about sustainable living and sustainable resources and also Victorian buildings because this is a Victorian building and before the project there was no access to here so it means that they can come and learn about that and also we've got a water turbine in the river which generates all our electricity for this building so they can go and see how that works. Right what we see here is we've got the Archimedes screw turbine uh, it runs off the water and it's off the main river uh, to the left of the turbine you can see the fish pass and the eel pass uh, and to the left you can see the, the original weir which was put in by the EA in the 60s. It's all fed off the same river. Over here you have the old water wheel which is no longer in use uh, but it's just been refurbished to, to see it as it would have looked. The park is run predominantly by volunteers. We couldn't run the park without them and they help with a whole range of tasks from manning this exhibition. So there's a, a whole team of Living Green volunteers who are trained up on how the different technologies work, how the different products work and are trained up on how to give that base level of advice to visitors who come into the exhibition. There's also volunteers that help cutting and picking up litter and clearing the river. There's Volunteers run our second-hand bookshop, there's volunteers helping our cafe, there's volunteers that help with our schools programme. So 
so our bit of the Living Green project finished in November 2011. So our, our, our bit finished, because the other part of the Living Green project was that all our centres would finish at different times so that we could share best practice. So when we went round and looked at the centre in Antwerp, we could see that the most popular exhibits and the, and the areas that work best were the ones where, as a family or a group, you could play with them, interact with them. So we've tried to make our in exhibition as interactive as possible. We've also got lots of cut-throughs in the building so that you can see what the floor looks like, you can see what the different types of insulation look like, because that's what Antwerp were retrofitting into the building so that they could put those bits in. So we wanted to make sure we had them in from the beginning. So it's been really helpful being part of that project so that we could learn from what had happened in Antwerp and then also hopefully pass on, pass on our learnings to Lille in terms of what they're trying to do in, in their building. My personal interest in the project was to to bring back some more life and the heart to the park. So I wasn't particularly interested in sustainable renovation before I started the project, but it's been really interesting going on the inspirational visits as part of the project and working with the, the different partners in Europe has really helped us push this project to be as good as it, it can be. And I've really enjoyed learning about what's happening in Europe and, and what different ways and techniques are happening and how we can uh, apply that back. <laughs>